are facing tonight. And both teams come in with significant injuries. For Houston, starting right guard Brandon Brooks is out, but the offensive line gets a big boost with the return of Pro Bowl left tackle Sean Brown, who's Dwayne Brown, excuse me, who's missed the last two weeks also with a toe injury. Meanwhile, linebacker Brian Cushing, who was knocked out of last week's game with a concussion, passed the requisite protocol and will start tonight. Now for San Francisco, starting right tackle Anthony Davis, who was questionable all week with a shoulder injury, he will start. But Nambi Asamoah, the team's normal nickelback, will miss his second straight week with a knee injury. And all-pro linebacker Patrick Willis will also miss his second straight because of a groin injury. Michael Wilhoyt, Al, will be starting for Willis tonight. All right, thank you, Michelle. So as the 49ers get set for their fifth game of the year, Jim Harbaugh is in his third season as the head coach. He has taken his team to the NFC Championship games in each of the last two years and to the Super Bowl last year. Gary Kubiak already in his eighth season. Hard to believe as the Texans head coach, 61-55, and 55, his career record. And, of course, they've had a lot of success over the last two years. Phil Dawson, longtime Cleveland Browns kicker, who was picked up by the 49ers in the offseason to kick off to Keyshawn Martin, developing into one of the better return men in the NFL in his second year out of Michigan State. So the Texans and the 49ers each at 500, starting the second quarter of the season. And off we go from Candlestick, where the Texans won the toss and received. And this is Martin looking for room and a great open field tackle made at the 12-yard line by C.J. Spillman. The Texans with Schaub at quarterback. Let's take a look at their starters. Matt Schaub, Virginia. Arian Foster, University of Tennessee. Andre Johnson, the U. DeAndre Hopkins, Clemson University. Owen Daniels, on Wisconsin. Gary Graham, Wisconsin. Dwayne Brown, Virginia Tech. Wade Smith, the University of Memphis. Chris Myers, Miami Palmetto Middle School. Ben Jones, Georgia. Derek Newton, Arkansas State. And the Texans will start with both Foster and Tate in the backfield and Foster splits left then and they give the ball off to Tate who's their number two running back and he can't go anywhere and that is Will Hoy. Michelle talking about the fact he will take the place of the all-pro Willis second year man out of Washburn. Big shoes to fill for him Will Hoy right here and this is the signature play for the Texans. You have to be able to stop that stretch play and right off the bat a loss of one bodes well for this 49er defense. And there is the all-pro linebacker, Patrick Willis, who missed all the preseason with a broken hand, but the second game in a row that he has missed because of a groin injury. And a nice hole, but it's closed quickly as Eric Reed, the number one draft choice, the safety out of LSU, meets Foster head-on. A minute into the game, it'll be third down and six. Schaub now has had an interception return for a touchdown in each of the last three games. It's tied for the longest streak in NFL history. And you wouldn't think that you'd be tied for a record like that with Peyton Manning and with John Elway. That's good company anyway. Usually that's a good sign. Right. Third and six. Shot from the gun. 49ers with a four-man rush. And then Shop has this one picked off. And this is Brock running in for a touchdown. And Matt Schaub has to look on in utter disbelief. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare for him. Four pick sixes on four successive games. Just a trap coverage. It happens all the time. This guy sits right on it, comes off on the underneath breaker. They make it look like man coverage. And for Matt Schaub, the nightmare, and I do mean nightmare, continues. So the, the 49ers, 49ers score. take the lead. Phil Dawson in to kick the extra point. The pick six by Tremaine Brock, who is a backup defensive back, but played very well ten nights ago against St. Louis. Seven to nothing, San Francisco just like that. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities.
by the brilliant minds and machines of GE and by Frost Brew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. San Francisco Railway Museum, Market Street, downtown, detailing the history of cable cars and street trolleys dating back to 1873. Candlestick dates back to 1960 when the baseball giants moved in here. 71 when the 49ers came in. Matt Schaub's going to get the ball again. But he must feel like it's the middle of the night and he's just dreaming this. Well, and now his teammates are starting to look at him. Keyshawn Martin. And good run back this time for Martin. Spinning around, staying on his feet, skirting the sideline, and bringing it out close to midfield. Giving him good position. Corey Lemonnier makes the tackle, and we go back to the pick six. That job trying to do a little look off here, but it's not what he needs to be seeing. If he wants to throw this one for the first down, the only thing that matters is did that outside corner squat on me? If that matters, if he does that, you cannot throw the football there. And for Matt Schaub, he has to be able to show as a veteran quarterback that he can make decisions like that. I mean, that's the essence of what he's doing on the field for the Texans. Arian Foster on first down can gain two yards before he's tackled by Navarro Bowman who doesn't get a lot of acclaim or publicity because he of course plays with Patrick Willis and a few other stars but he does a masterful job well especially when you consider now that he's playing out there without Patrick Willis without Alden Smith and he was fantastic in their game against the Rams last Thursday night they actually blitzed him a little bit more two sacks in that game and looked like a running back coming through the hole on the other side Foster again over the left side Stopped there for a gain of one, third down. Let's meet the 49er starters. Ray McDonald, the University of Florida. Glenn Dorsey, Luzam State. Justin Smith, Missouri. Amar Brooks, UVA. Navarro Bowman, Penn State. Michael Will Hoy, Highland Park High School, Topeka, Kansas. Dan Scooter, Grand Valley State University. Carlos Rogers, Auburn University. Eric Reed, Louisiana State University. Dante Hitmer, Glenville High School. Terrell Brown, DBU, University of Texas. Of course, the man missing the second straight game, Alden Smith. We'll talk about him a little bit later. Checked himself into a substance abuse rehab facility. And on third down, it's caught by Owen Daniels. The Texans with a pair of outstanding tight ends in Daniels and in Garrett Graham. He's tackled by Parrish Cox. And so Kubiak's team converts on third and long. If there is a mismatch here, it's these two athletic tight ends that the Texans have going against some of the other younger secondary members here. Owen Daniels, Garrett Graham, they have the ability when you go into some sort of man coverage of winning all those battles. More like wide receivers really than tight ends. Play action set up the screen, but it's slow developing and it gives the 49er defense time to take care of Foster before he can get on track. Pressure put on by Brown and the tackle made by Will Hoyt. Second and 12 after a loss of two. You know, we talked to Matt Schaub a little bit yesterday, and he'd say, you know, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't going to be, it wasn't a tough week for me last week. He said, but if you play enough football, you know that it's how you move forward. It's how you deal with that adversity that ultimately defines you. Well, the adversity just grew. Said the one thing after that game last Sunday, he couldn't wait to get back on the practice field. Second down and 12 from the 45. Four-man rush, 49ers basically rush for almost all the time. And Andre Johnson, star receiver for so long, now 11th year in the league, tackled by Brown. Gain of seven, third and five. Andre Johnson, one of the great receivers to ever play this game. And he's such a big body that even a good corner like Terrell Brown, you get out there and he can just sort of swatch you off. Antoine Bolden has a little bit of that in him as well. Three times over 1,500 yards receiving, including last year. And on pace again this season for a fantastic year. There's a nice running mate now in DeAndre Hopkins, who was the number one draft choice wide receiver out of Clemson. On third and six, Sean hanging in the pocket, throws, and it's caught. And that is Keyshawn Martin, their number three wide out, making the catch. And so two third down conversions for the Texans, and they have the ball at the 25-yard line. Good job by Schaub getting this ball out quickly because Navarro Bowman 
was bearing down on him. Watch this move. This is what we saw last week against the Rams. Chris Myers, a Pro Bowl center, completely fanned on the play and was talking a little bit to Navarro Bowman. He was heavily recruited as a point guard in high school by Georgia Tech and NC State. From the 25, play action buys a ton of time and then the pass is incomplete. Intended for Andre Johnson down the middle, second and ten. I don't know what happened to that ball, but it looked like he had a pretty good look at Johnson popping open, and he was open in the middle of the field. Hmm. Sometimes you get it in your head when you, when you start just double-checking and making sure, and that ball just sailed on. High and outside. Uh -huh. Second and ten. Cutting it back. Foster. And that's a gain of nine coming up a yard short of the first down. Reed will make the tackle. Third down and one for Houston now. The hardest part about playing this team is everybody goes so hard that way that when the back does that, a lot of times there's nobody back there. Nice job by Wade Smith getting his linebacker on the ground backside. And now we're starting to look a little bit like what the Houston Texans typically look like. His own blocking scheme. It's a noted for third down and one from the 16. And this is Foster, and he'll pick up the first down. Will White makes the tackle. We have our first flag of the game, and thus we will hear from Mike Carey for the first time tonight. Holding. Offense number 81. 10 yards for this goal. Third down. That's Owen Daniels with the call, so that will negate what would have been a third successive first down on the third down play. Well, one of the good things about the Texans' tight ends is that they're excellent receivers. One of the tougher parts is they're not great blockers. That time, they got the arm in, and uh, that hurts. Third and 11. 49ers have yet to have the football tonight, but they lead 7-0 on an interception return for a touchdown by Tremaine Brock. And a stunt up front, and now you've got a stoppage before the snap. For a full start. Full start. Offense number 81, five yards for third. Oh, so that's back-to-back -back on Daniels. Pro Bowl tight end. And you really have to, at this moment, everybody around that shot has to play really well. You know your quarterback's shaking. There's no way that you can throw your fourth pick six in the last four games and not be unnerved to some degree. So you've got to help him some. No penalties. Make some plays. Take the pressure off of him for a while. Third and 16. Pressure on, screen set up, Tate makes the catch, but he'll get tackled at the 26-yard line by Carlos Rogers, and thus the Texans will have to settle for a field goal attempt, which will be about 48 yards. And make it less than that, as the they'll spot the ball at the 27-yard line, so it's a 45-yard attempt for Randy Bullock, who was drafted last year, spent the season on injured reserve, so this in effect is first season in uniform. Bullock, a fifth round pick last year from Texas A&M to try to put on three, and the kick is no good. Wide to the left. And for a change, you can't blame the wind to Candlestick. There is none right now. 7-0. For the total viewing experience, check out NBC Sports Live Extra. A lot of good stuff. The screen will look like that. Michelle, as usual. Social media reports. Mike Florio aboard. And tonight, Jeff Garcia is the guest analyst who had a stellar career as the 49er quarterback. And that wasn't easy when you follow Montana and Young. <laughs> he did pretty well, though. He did very well. So after that missed field goal, the two penalties on Owens on the... Uh, Daniels was the was the killer on that drive. The 49ers have it for the first time 
And Kaepernick's first play is a pass too high for John Baldwin, who came over from Kansas City a few weeks ago. Colin Kaepernick took over for Alex Smith. Week one against the Packers, 412, three games since 444. So Smith got hurt last year. Colin took him to the Super Bowl. And by the way, Alex is doing just fine. Thank you very much with a record of 5-0 in Kansas City. How about that? Mm. Second down and 10. And Frank Gore will get stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Had a 153-yard game against St. Louis. And let's take a look at the Niners starters. Colin Kaepernick, Nevada. Frank Gore, the U. Bruce Miller, Central Florida. Anquan Bolden, Florida State University. Kyle Williams, Arizona State. Vernon Davis, University of Maryland. Joe Staley, Central Michigan University. Mike Yupati, Idaho. Jonathan Goodwin, University of Michigan. Alex Boone, the Ohio State University. Anthony Davis, Rutgers. Outstanding offensive line, and that line, the interior five, making their 21st consecutive start. Third and ten, Kaepernick steps up and guns it over the middle, caught by the big tight end Vernon Davis, who could play a huge role tonight. DJ Swearinger, rookie second round draft choice from South Carolina with a tackle. First things first, J.J. Watt right here is going to get a lot of attention here tonight. Double team right off the bat. They are not going to let him wreck their game plan the way he did a week ago. And this is a nice start. Get it into the big guy, Vernon Davis. Bit of a decoy last week. He did score a touchdown against the Rams, but that hamstring feeling much better now. Now Kaepernick under center. And Davis in motion to the slot. Play action. Kaepernick hangs in there, throws, and that is Bolden making the catch. Contact immediately from Jonathan Joseph. So what a pickup. He was, because of salary cap restrictions and all of that, he became available, traded by Baltimore to San Francisco, and right now he's number one for Kaepernick. How did Jonathan Joseph miss that ball? It went right through his hands, and somehow Bolden caught it on the other end. It went right between his hands, and at least ordinarily you're going to tip the ball away from the receiver. Bolden so big and strong, he caught it anyway. Bolden making his 25th catch of the season. And a little trickery here, and Kyle Williams on the end around for a first down before he is run out of bounds. Frank Gore with a good block to spring him. 13-yard gain. Now, one of the problems is you come around this way, and you see the reverse going the other way, and you think, okay, I got that. But then you've got a receiver with a full head of steam coming around. Whitney Merciless there is... Just no match, and he's probably the fastest of these defensive linemen. Paul Williams showing his speed. From the 27, Miller is the fullback. Now he's in motion. Kaepernick, short drop, then throws, and it's incomplete. Over the top of Bolden's head, covered by Joseph, second down. Here's the Texans' defense. J.J. Watt. Wisconsin, Earl Mitchell, Arizona, Antonio Smith, Shaolin Temple, Brooks Reed, University of Arizona, Brian Cushing, USC, Joe Mays, North Dakota State University, Whitney Merciless, Illinois, Kareem Jackson, University of Alabama, Danielle Manning, Abilene Christian University, Ed Reed, I was born to do this, J. Joe, Lock Hill. Ed Reed, born to do it, 10 stellar seasons with the Ravens, and now a Texan. In his 11th year in the league, and Gore, the 49ers' leading all-time rusher, takes it to the 21-yard line. Kind of a strange year for Frank Gore. First two games, he averaged just two yards a carry, 30 carries for 60 yards. The last two games, averaged 7.6 yards a carry. And clearly, when this guy gets going, everything else seems to open up. I mean, I've always thought that this was the key to their offense. When they get Frank Gore going, then you see some of the flash plays down the field. Still good as ever. Ninth year in the league from Miami. Third and five. Blitz coming. Kaepernick hangs in there. Guns it over the middle. Davis makes his second catch of this drive. And takes it to the 10-yard line where Daniel Manning makes the tackle. They can pick up a first down without a touchdown. The ball will be spotted just outside the 10. 
J.J. Watt and Brian Cushing all over here on this side, and J.J. Watt with this inside move almost got there. Even though that's like one of those body blows in boxing, even though they got the completion, Kaepernick got the message. He said, I'm close. Keep your eyes open. And Kaepernick under center again. They have run very little of the read option over the last two weeks. More conventional. And Gore will take the ball to the eight-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. The Houston defense, which number one in the league in terms of total yards allowed, but in the red zone, the opponents have had the ball in there nine times with eight touchdowns and a field goal. We'll figure. Well, strange when you consider this is the number one defense in the National Football League. That's been their one Achilles heel. Wade Phillips, third year as the defensive coordinator. Going back home to Houston. Second down, seven from the eight. Gore, uh, 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 and that is Brian Cushing who sustained a concussion last week, but he passed all of the tests, the protocol, and all of that. But he did come out before the game to get his teammates stirred up and started banging helmets with him. Yeah, that may not be the best thing for a concussion, but Cushing, the key for him is his speed. He's a guy that can come hard inside and even though a guy like Vernon Davis is a tremendous athlete you just can't catch up to him boy did they miss Cushing's speed at the end of the game last week against Seattle Russell Wilson started running crazy third and nine and a quick toss to Bolden and Bolden is going to be very close to the first down as they'll spot the ball at the one or inside of it as the field judge comes in there to put it inside the first down line, and it will be first and goal from see about the six-inch line. Excuse me. Now they see this play a lot with the Green Bay Packers. They just go down and block. Watch the receivers. They don't even turn their head back. That is strictly almost like a run play. It's not pass interference because of the fact the ball is thrown so quickly. It's a very effective play. I don't really know how you stop that one. First and goal with a minute 45 to go in the quarter. Give it to Gore. And Gore is in for the touchdown. Forty Niners on that drive converted a third and ten, a third and five, and a third and nine. And Gore takes it in. Alex Boone, one of many moving offensive line parts on this 49ers team. They can overpower you. And there, there was one thing that Houston was concerned about was could the 49ers just line up and push us backwards? So far, that is not a good start. And for Matt Schaub, the pressure builds. Phil Dawson converts. So the Niners with two touchdowns, one on defense, one on offense. A minute 37 left in the opening frame. 14 to nothing, San Francisco. World's most wanted criminal just became their best informant, but behind every case there are deadly consequences. It's the premise of the blacklist. Tomorrow night here on NBC. We look at uh, the waters of San Francisco Bay and the Golden Gate Bridge. On those waters a couple of weeks ago, the America's Cup was won by us. Miracle comeback. Team America. Three yards into the end zone. Keyshawn Martin's going to lose the ball but he's able to re-grasp it and then he'll be taken down in a scrum whoa <laughs> boy oh boy and Martin pays a little bit of a price there 14 to nothing San Francisco Vic Fangio is the San Francisco defensive coordinator his group Last year, second and fewest points allowed. And his group is on the field right now as Schaub tries to overcome a 14-point deficit. And Tate starts by breaking a tackle, which is something he does a lot. He's the backup back. He's been injured, though, over the past couple of years. They'd like to be able to get him in more and give Foster a little more of a rest. But there has been Tate who could provide a little double trouble out of that backfield for Houston. Yeah, just having a uh, big year, fumbled the ball once last week, but 
he is going to see a lot of action. Everybody knows about Arian Foster, but Tate, a big part of this offense. Gain of eight, second down and two. And now to Foster, who burrows his way out to the 27 and a half yard line, close to a first down. We'll see where they put it down in the final minute of the opening quarter. You know, the, it's the first down. At this point, if you're Gary Kubiak, you just have to let your quarterback breathe a little bit. I think you're going to see some shorter, quicker passes, just trying to get his confidence going. Now, we talked to him last night. He doesn't look like he's lost any confidence, but with a start like that, you need to have some success here to build on. Play action, backside screen to the tight end, Daniels. Good looking play there, and Daniels gets whacked and his helmet comes off. But he picks up the first down. And that is the end of the first quarter with a score. The San Francisco 49ers 14, the Houston Texans nothing. Sunday Night Football from San Francisco continues after these messages. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Geico. Look at this shot. That's aerial coverage. Sub, sub coverage as well. Under the under the Golden Gate Bridge. In downtown San Francisco. Mm. Out in front of you. Unbelievable. What a shot. Beautiful. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoya in the Bay Area. And Foster taking it up to the 46. You know one thing, Chris, at the end of the game tonight, one fan base is going to be a lot happier at three and two, kind of feeling they're all the way back or at least back. And the other fan base is going to go, what's going on here? Yeah, because let's face it, these are two of the teams that were Super Bowl favorites uh, coming into the season, and both of them a little uncomfortable. I will say this about the 49ers. They got hammered on the front end of this schedule. They have had nothing but tough teams to play on the road. This is a team that I think by the time that they get through these first six, they could go run off about ten in a row. Second down and three. And that's a first down as Foster takes it across midfield, tackled by Dan Scuda. First down, Houston. Well, Arian Foster is a guy that, again, we're going to get some of these cutbacks going here. And the one thing you'll notice out of the 49ers defensively, unlike a team like maybe Seattle where there's a lot of times eight guys up around the line of scrimmage, you have the 49ers defense that really likes to play with just seven, so they can protect in the passing game back with four guys back. So this front seven has to hold up. Foster runs into his own man and gets taken down by Eric Reed. Foster was undrafted, played his college football at Tennessee, signed as a free agent, but what a pickup he has been. Last week against the Seahawks, 171 yards from scrimmage. And you take a look at all the guys that were drafted the year he came out, including Sean McCoy. He has far more yardage than any of them. Ben Tate comes back into the game at second down and 10. And Schaub steps up, throws short. His contact made. Andre Johnson looks around for a flag covered by Terrell Brown. There is no penalty. Third down. Yeah, well, you could see that Terrell Brown, I think, was trying to get his head turned around. Outside receiver here. And as he turns around, all that contact just sort of becomes a part of the play. I think that's a good no call. Two minutes into the second quarter. J.J. Watt, six stitches in his nose last week, wearing the protection there and looking on, and now a timeout is going to be taken here by the Texans. 13.04 before the half. 14 to nothing, 49ers. We'll detail the Alman Smith story when we can here, but right now you take a look at most sacks since 2011. 38 by Smith. We have no idea when he's going to return. He's going to miss his second consecutive game tonight. But he's one guy who's missing. And Corey Lemonnier is one of the guys, the rookie out of Auburn, drafting in the third round, taking that spot. Dan Scooter also filling in as well. 
Meanwhile, after the Houston timeout, it's third down and 10. And Schaub swings it to the outside, and that's incomplete, intended for Garrett Graham. It'll be fourth down. Well, one of the things that nobody does any better than this bunch is this stunt right here. Their defensive tackles, I think that's Justin Smith in this case here, comes out and just basically grabs two offensive linemen, and then Alden Smith or Corey Lemonnier or one of those guys loops inside, and more often than not, thanks to Justin Smith, usually gets a free run at the quarterback. Well, Shane Luckler came over from across the bay, longtime Oakland punter, highest average in NFL history. At 37, they picked him up. So he's in his first year as a Texan. Kyle Williams is back, and Williams will call for and make a fair catch at the eight. When we talked about Alden Smith, a dominating presence, missing his second game since checking into a substance abuse rehab facility. More from Michelle. Well, Al, when Alden Smith was arrested for suspicion of DUI in the early morning of September 20th, it was the latest event in a pattern of reckless behavior. Three days later, as you said, he checked himself into alcohol rehab. He's still undergoing treatment there. 49ers management has been in contact with Smith. They're encouraged by the steps he's taking to address the problem. Now, the 49ers are not sure when or if Smith will return this season, but whenever he does, the team will consult with the professionals who are currently treating him in order to provide him the best support possible. And I'll finish in a minute, Al. All right, first now for the 49ers from the eight-yard line. Kendall Hunter is the back to come up in the pistol here. And they'll hand the ball off, and this is a first down run for Hunter. Back to you, Michelle. Well, the 49ers, Al, they're currently paying Alden Smith his full salary, though they're not obligated to do that. Smith's first court date for the DUI is scheduled for November 4th. And apart from the legal side, the NFL confirmed for me that he would be subject to league discipline only after the case is adjudicated, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. So it could be a quite a while before you see Smith back in a San Francisco uniform. First and 10 from the 19. And then there's Gore. And Gore. Through the middle, he goes all the way out to the 47 behind a Bruce Miller block. So Houston able to pin him deep, and then two runs by the 49ers, and they're already in the midfield, gain of 26. Start with Upati here, and then follow up with Miller inside. This sort of trapping, whamming, all Al Michaels' favorite phrases is just wearing defenses out. We saw it against the Rams last Thursday night. They had no answer, and so far the number one defense in football has no answer. First and 10 from the 45. And this time it's Gore who gets taken down by J.J. Watt. Defensive player of the year last season in the National Football League. Stuffs him for a loss of four. Right here, and I think this guy is more dangerous to run away from than towards him. He is so quick with that first step and just relentless. I thought his effort in the game last week, overtime game against Seattle, never came out once. Russell Wilson was running around like a crazy man. He did not take one play off, not one play that wasn't a thousand percent effort. I could not have been more impressed with the performance a week ago by J.J. Watt. Second down and 14. And Kaepernick brings it incomplete. Well, Watt last year, not only the league leader in sacks and a guy who deflects and bats away pass after pass, but tremendous in terms of stuffing guys on the run. Yeah, the tackles for loss really where he took his fight. He had 20 and a half sacks, but what people don't realize is that he had 21 and a half tackles for loss. So over 40 plays that started for the offense ended up in the backfield because of J.J. Watt third and 14 including well a play tonight and there is a pass that is incomplete intended for Anquan Bolden the pressure that time again Watt so he's showing you all the things he can do batting away passes or at least coming close stuffing guys behind the line of scrimmage and you know what he can do in terms of sacks well in that time Anthony Davis was just going to let him go but J.J. Watt we've seen him do some incredible physical things remember the thing where he's jumping on top of the box that measured like 60 inches or something so if you're not going to block this guy odds are pretty good your quarterback's going to have a hard time throwing that quick screen. Well was he a mess last week at the end of that game with that bloody face 
but did not want to come out. Andy Lee, for years one of the best in the league. Shiloh Ko is back to return it. Ko from the 13. And he gets knocked down there for a run back of 8 to the 21-yard line. 10 and a half to the half. 14-0 home team. We talked about some of the stretch runs from the Houston Texans, and the key is always what happens on the back side of those plays. So far, Wade Smith has been tremendous, getting the cut blocks on the back side, this time against Navarro Bowman. When they get that, the cutback will be there for Arian Foster. Once again, same thing, back side. This time he's going to get Glenn Dorsey, cut him down, and then the hole gaping. That is the key to this offense. This time the play fake to him. He does go out into the pattern. Shaw running around trying to find anybody and then throws over the middle and it's caught at the 25-yard line by Garrett Graham. Gets taken down by Dante Whitner. At least he's Whitner for the moment. He's put in all, done all the paperwork for a name change in Ohio. Hasn't come through yet, but he's going to change his name at least through his playing career to Hitner. Yeah, Mama wasn't too happy about that in the beginning, was she? And then he said, well, she finally kind of signed up for it and agreed to it. And I think some of the fines that's been levied against him that he thought were clean hits led him to say, what the heck, I might as well just go all in for it now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like being subtle. Yeah. Second and seven. And that's a gain of a couple of yards here for Foster over the right side. Third and five upcoming. I'll tell you, well, Arian Foster, he's something. He's a guy that leads the NFL with 6,100 yards from scrimmage since the start of 2010. Not bad for a guy that was undrafted. Can you imagine, what was it, 22, 20, 23 running backs 24. taken ahead of him because we thought it might be why he wore number 23, but it wasn't. Got in a little jawing before he goes off. Third and four. And five receivers out. And that pass is incomplete. And Johnson again looking around for a flag. And this time there is a flag. And then Mike Carey. Haven't heard very much from Mike tonight. Only two penalties in the game. And they both came on back-to-back -back plays on Houston's second drive. I think there's going to be pass interference. Pass interference. Yeah. Defense number 25 from the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. Quite a battle going on on the outside. Here we go. Terrell Brown out there going against Andre Johnson. Physical, both sides physical. Oh boy, it was pretty close. Big break for Houston. From the 35 on first down. Tate. And he gets stuffed there by Eric Reed. That's one of the reasons they found Deshaun Goldson expendable. Let him go to Tampa Bay because they knew they were going to pick up Reed in the draft. And he's been an immediate starter. Oh, Eric Reed came up and hammered that one, did he? But watch the how synchronized this offensive line is. I mean, they you can't believe how hard they work at making all their run and pass plays look the same. All their pass plays will come off of that same action. And then Shop throws, but it's going to be short of the first to Owen Daniels. Taken down by Bowman. It'll be third down and two. I'll tell you how the most improved player I've seen on this 49ers team is this Eric Reed, the safety. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, watching him grow as a player, they're starting to play him a little more in man coverage, which allows him to blitz a little bit more. And so far tonight, he's had two big hits. Deshaun Goldson, the guy he replaced, would have been proud of either of them. Keyshawn Martin, who was shaken up on a return, a quick return earlier, is back in the game. Their number three wideout to give it to Foster. And Foster, with that second effort that burst after contact, picks up a first down. And he's been joined with all the 49ers tonight. You know, sometimes your back just has to win the battle. This is going to be one of those that, you know, Arian Foster, this play wasn't, okay, you're going to get hit there, and now you just have to find a way to get the first down. 
And that's what great backs do. People forget how big this guy is. They were really concerned about having to tackle him in the secondary. They wanted linebackers and defensive linemen trying to tackle Arian Foster, not their corners. Set him up outside as a wide out. Oh. Shot comes the other way, and it's tipped, and it's picked off. And this is Brock again. And he'll get spun out, out of bounds by Johnson. So a second interception for Tremaine Brock. The other was a pick six. This gives the 49ers the ball in Houston territory. Fourteen to nothing, and the 49ers get the ball. Well, they'll go over the pictures and the strategy here with Carl Durrell, the quarterback's coach, with Schaub and the backup quarterback, 13, T.J. Yates. Eight touchdown passes and now eight interceptions this season for Schaub, the beleaguered one right now. And there's Andre Johnson, the intended receiver. Brock with both interceptions for San Francisco tonight. The 49ers... Set up from the 32-yard line. And Kaepernick is going to take off. Swings to the outside. First down. Slides down at the 17-yard line. And hurt on the play is Ed Reed. Who missed some time with hip surgery. And he's slow in getting up. Well, obviously a frustrated defense watching the way their quarterback's playing. So they come with pressure. Everybody comes up. Now it's Colin Kaepernick, just like Russell Wilson did a week ago. Finding the little seam and taking off. That is a backbreaker for anybody trying to blitz. And J.J. Watt thought he might have gotten a hold, did not. 14-yard run. For Kaepernick and that Gore. And Gore inside the five sets up a first down and goal. Mike Yapati helping to spring him on the block. So two big runs and a first and goal for the 49ers. Oh, you got Mike Cupati going to come right over and kick out again. They are just destroying people with their trap game and the wham game. And believe me, if nobody is blocking you and you're playing the San Francisco 49ers, look right or look left. Somebody is about to hit you in the ear hole. First and goal. To the outside goes Gore and gets about half the distance. It'll be second and goal and back to the interception that set this all up Tremaine Brock watch him he never even looks at Andre Johnson he is looking at the quarterback in the backfield and by the time that Matt Schaub was able to set his feet and throw it out there try and look him off a little bit now he's sneaking a peek and that was all Tremaine Brock needed Brock a huge play in the game last week and for Gary Kubiak he's got to be thinking about making a change Anthony Dixon is the tailback in this show. Give it to him. Dixon to the outside, and he will strut in. Good block by Alex Boone. And Anthony Dixon's initial run of the night results in a touchdown. A lot of good blocks on this one. We'll start with Bruce Miller right here and one of many. Inside gets it jammed up. Alex Boone comes around, cleans it up. And Al, the 49ers are playing well right now, but the Texans are giving them the game. Absolutely. They're just giving it to them. Absolutely. Phil Dawson for the extra point. Set up by the pick. Brock with a pair tonight. And with five minutes to the half, 21 0. Wednesday night, rivalry night on NBCSN. The Stanley Cup champion, Chicago Blackhawks, taking on the Blues in St. Louis. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern time on the NBC Sports Network. The Bay Bridge. Ed Reed, we talked about him getting shaken up on the last series, hopping up off the table. Keyshawn Martin is back to return the kick. Texans have dug a big hole. Martin will come up the middle and get stuck inside the 10-yard line. Great special teams coverage, and that's Spillman again. Made a big tackle earlier, and Slupar as well. 21 to nothing, San Francisco. 
Sunday Night Football brought to you by Verizon. Never be without football with NFL Mobile by Toyota. Let's go places. By Wendy's. And by Frostproof Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. University of San Francisco, you saw Bill Russell commemorated there. Pete Rozelle went there. Balls at the nine-yard line as the Texans begin this drive with a four-yard run by Arian Foster. Well, with the way things are going for Schaub and what's going on there, of course, there is T.J. Yates, who actually led them when Schaub got hurt two years ago to a playoff win against Cincinnati. So he has some experience, and they talk also about Case Keenum, hometown boy, played at the University of Houston, inactive tonight, a free agent. There he is. And, uh, well, the way things are going, that's a storyline in Houston. Is that flash? <laughs> yeah. Second and six, putting it mildly, but the pass is caught up at the 31-yard line by Andre Johnson. You know, let me just say this about Matt Schaub. A, he's probably their best chance to mount a comeback in this game. One thing you have to realize is that backup quarterbacks during the week of practice may get one, maybe two snaps with the first string offense. So that means that T.J. Yates, since the season has started, probably has fewer than 10 snaps with the first string offense. So it would be a very difficult in-game transition. Not impossible, but probably Schaub still gives them the best chance in this game. All right, barring injury, I would doubt we would see him. Owen Daniels is the intended receiver. Felt he was interfered with it, second down. I'll tell you, there you see the other part of the game of Navarro Bowman. Just such a good defender. They can't decide what to do with him. He's probably the best pass defender they have from the linebacker position against an excellent receiving tight end. And he's also the best blitzer they've got coming. So you kind of have to decide what are you going to do with them, but they're all good. Second and ten. Launching it deep. But the coverage is good right there and stepping out of bounds. That's why the hack came down. Posey covered there by Terrell Brown. It'll be third down and ten. You just can't do it any better than Terrell Brown did it there. As a cornerback, you want to force the receiver to go outside of you. And then you just gently squeeze him. Look at the top of your screen. Gently squeeze him into the boundary. And then he steps out of bounds. And even if he catches the ball, it doesn't count. So Terrell Brown off to a great start. The one questionable pass interference call, the only mark against him. Third and ten, three and a half to the half. Schaub throws, caught, but making the tackle is Bowman on Foster. And so he will come up short of the first down. It'll be fourth and a couple. Interesting decision here. Very. Because you're down 21. You need something going into the half, and I kind of agree with this one. If, if Kubiak's going to go for this, you've got an excellent running back and running game. Take your shot right here. Fourth down, and looks as if it's a short two yards, yard and a half. At least they're going to line up to go for it. And they will. It is Foster with that second burst. Bowman and Justin Smith were there, but Foster would not be denied, and that moves the chains. Boy, Bowman read that one perfectly. He had it sized up and just missed the tackle. Here's Bowman going to shoot through the backside gap here. Mm. Nobody there. He's got a free shot, and once again, for the second time tonight, Arian Foster, on his own, picks up a first down. Foster and Tate, both of them great at breaking tackles, getting that extra yardage. Coming up upon the two-minute warning. Schaub's going to go deep, and with the coverage great, a flag is thrown. The intended receiver is the rookie Hopkins. That's Brock covering on the play, and the 49ers all indicating it's going to be offensive interference on the number one draft choice out of Clemson. Pass interference. Offense number 10. Well, DeAndre Hopkins off to a great start for a rookie. 
And sometimes, especially in a game like this, you get a little frustrated. Let's see what he does here. Puts rest that hand right on top of the shoulder, and Jermaine Brock able to still jump up there and make a play on it. He was trying to use Brock as leverage to jump over the top of him. It's a really good piece of officiating mm -hmm. right there to mm -hmm. see that. Jermaine Brock has been tremendous mm. so far. Start chanting MVP pretty soon. <laughs> I'm telling you. From the 32. Schaub runs it over the middle, and Hopkins makes the catch at the 35, and that takes us to the two-minute warning in San Francisco where the 49ers lead the Texans 21 nothing. So at a halftime coming up, what a game in Texas today. Broncos and the Cowboys, Andrew Luck, another fourth quarter comeback this time against Seattle. Bob and Hines will weigh in on the first half, and we'll weigh in in twilight in San Francisco, where the Texans are trying to avoid the twilight zone. They're down 21 to nothing. It's second down and 15. And Sean throws too high intended for Hopkins. Chris, it's now been almost, a, it's been more than a 60 minutes of clock time since Houston scored a point. They got all 20 points last week in the second quarter against Seattle. Blanked in the second half, blanked in the first half tonight. But, but this is a streaky offense. Remember, they were down 21-7 at halftime in week one against the Chargers, came back and won that game 31-28. So we have seen them put together multiple drives in a hurry, but it's not looking that way so far. We've got 12 drives without a point the last two games. This is drive 13. And Schaub will get flushed out the other way. Goes against the grain and the pass is incomplete. Again, Hopkins has been the man he's been going to play after play now. Covered by Brown, fourth down in the punt. Boy, Justin Smith sometimes can just overpower people. Watch him here against Wade Smith. A little slow getting off the ball. And got him airborne almost. Justin Smith, one of those big, strong men, and I think one of the great unsung heroes in the league. All those sacks by Alden Smith, a lot of them because of what work Justin Smith does right beside him. Here's Leckler's punt. Kyle Williams will gather it at the eight. Looks for room. Cuts it back to the other side. And gives the crowd a throw. Pretty good run back. It's about much more than pink on the field. Together, the NFL and the American Cancer Society helping women across the country make a crucial catch. Here's the personal impact stories. Find out how you can help finish the fight against breast cancer at NFL.com. Splash pink. Some going down. There it is. And are you involved in a great event in Cincinnati with yeah. Holly this week? Yeah, our pink ribbon luncheon. And really, the simple message is get checked. I mean, it's such a curable disease if it's detected early by any means and really at any age. Don't listen to all the insurance companies telling you when you should get checked. Mm -hmm. Get checked. 49ers have all of the timeouts at their disposal. And, whoa, <laughs> who else? G -G Didn't matter what Hunter did. He tried to cut it back and go back the other way. And Watt says, are you kidding? The key to J.J. Watt is the way he extends his arms. Watch the contact. Now the extension. Now he can go either direction he wants. And for a running back, that hurts. You know, that guy with 34-inch arms gets that extension. He can see on either side. And then he drops his head right into your chin. Second and 11. And stumbling his way forward is Hunter to the 31 yard line. It's going to be third down and eight and the timeout taken here. Texans took the timeout trying to conserve some time and then of course have, having to hold the 49ers on this play to make that pay off. It'll be third down and eight. Keep it on the ground. And the Texans do indeed stop K. 
Kendall Hunter there. They take another timeout and they will get the ball back in the waning seconds of the half. So fourth down for the 49ers. Andy Lee is in to punt. Houston will have no timeouts when they get the ball back. And we'll see if Martin can set him up with a, a decent return. It's a line drive kick. And Martin from the 23. That's the kind of kick that you can set up a decent return on. But that minor with a shoe being lost, that minor coverage is just great on special teams. And he brings it back to the 31-yard line with 37 seconds left. You know, that's one thing the Niners have done over the years. They do keep those special teams guys. Kasim Osgood, so good. C.J. Spillman, tremendous on special teams. And they don't have just a bunch of rookies out there doing it. They have guys that know how to play special teams. And it's been a factor so far here tonight. Here is Osgood. Been to the Pro Bowl as a special teamer. All right, you're my odds maker. Yeah. Who has the better odds of scoring here? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm going to say the Texans. Okay. 53-47. <laughs> and a tight one. There you have it. You'll take any proposition, won't you? All right. From the 31-yard line. Job throws, and that's caught up at the 34 by Garrett Graham. It's a short game. No timeouts available to them, so Schaub's got to get to the line in a hurry. And if you're going to spike it, you've got a lot of stuff going on here. And we don't have time to even do that. It won't do him any good here, trying to get into field goal range. And that'll be caught by Johnson. But now you've got to get up and spike it to at least have one more play left. Still not even close to field goal range. Oh, so, and, and they fumbled and, the ball. Yeah, right, and the official loses the football, and, well, that's a fitting coda to the first half for the Texans. Couldn't even get the ball spotted. 49ers get the second half kickoff. Kubiak mumbling at the officials, 21-0 at the half. They go to halftime next. one nothing is our halftime score here in San Francisco. You never know where your sudden star will come from. There's a fourth-year undrafted free agent who used to be a special teams maven who's really making a name for himself right now at cornerback. He is, and kids like drive throughs right? So how about a little Burger King inside edge here for Tremaine Brock? What a first half he had. Very first pass of the night by Matt Schaub. Little trap defense on the outside by Tremaine Brock. There you go. Fourth pick six in a row for Matt Shaw, but he was even better than that. Here comes up with his second pick of the night against Andre Johnson, one of the best in the business, and this was just classic corner play. Gets his head back around, gets interfered with, and still almost came up with the interception. So that's it. Uh, tonight's Burger King Inside Edge. Check out more insights from tonight on NBC Sports Live Extra. And off we go in the second half in San Francisco. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Michelle Tafoya. 49ers will get the ball. Randy Bullock sends it into the end zone and through the end zone. And we go to Michelle. Well, Al, the big question for Gary Kubiak was what is his plan at quarterback? And he told me we're sticking with Matt Schaub. He planned to go in at halftime and tell him to get back out there and get after it. And he said to me, I have bigger worries, like the play of my defense, special teams, and actually protecting my quarterback. As for the Niners, Frank Gore, who you saw on the sideline at the end of the first half, he is fine. Uh, Jim Harbaugh told me he's expected to come back in. They just retaped his ankles, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, Gary's got the whole smorgasbord here of of issues 21 to nothing the ball is at the 20 yard line they start with hunter in the backfield and once again kaepernick under center play action he's on down the sideline and incomplete vernon davis had gotten free for the moment with safety help coming at the end incomplete second and ten well, that hurts because that was wide open. But that's the first time I've seen what looks like a bit of a sore hamstring from Vernon Davis. Watch the tail end of this play. 
He's one of the fastest guys on the field, but you didn't see that little burst that we've seen. Remember in the playoffs, some of those plays, those wheel routes down the boundaries where he catch them and just take off? Still a little gimpy out there. And meanwhile, Ed Reed is not in the game to start at safety. Shallow KO takes his spot, second down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Back in the throws, and that is knocked down, and this time it's not. J.J. Watt, it's Jared Crick who pulls it, J.J. Watt, batting it away. Well, it doesn't matter who it is, I guess, for the Texans. Here's Crick right here. He's going to jump up and look like J.J. Watt on that one. But kind of interesting strategy, don't you think? Come right out, throw a couple of balls. You really, if you sort of sustain a drive here, and maybe they were just going for the kill mm -hmm. right off the shot and really had it. Uh, Vernon Davis is wide open. Uh, Kaepernick just missed the throw. Agree with that. Kaepernick is 4 of 10 for 45 yards tonight. And now Kaepernick again going deep and reaching up. And does he make the catch inbounds is the question. John Baldwin who came over from Kansas City, but he's out of bounds. So they picked him up in a trade. Um, at the onset of the year, and Jonathan Joseph, one of the very best in the league, is there for the coverage. Yeah, Jonathan Joseph gets whoever the best of those other receivers are, and they really were hoping to get John Baldwin going tonight because he is always going to see one-on-one -on -one coverage with Vernon Davis and Anquan Bolden on the field, desperately seeking that third wide receiver kind of threat on the outside and just can't seem to find it. This is Andy Lee's third punt of the night. Floater. Fair catch call for made by Martin. And we'll take a look at the numbers in the first half. And of course it's the turnovers that are really the uh, the difference right there. Because uh, the total yardage is pretty close, but uh, it's the two picks. But you can't ask for a better start than what happened right there. You're down 21 and your defense comes out and delivers a three and out. Now you have to deliver back. You have to give that defense, and it's a good one, something to hang their hat on. This is a team that's had like 600 more yards of offense than their opponents this year. They're capable, but they've got to get something going. You know, no points in their last 13 drives. Foster will cut it back, and Foster with a nice run there. Will Hoyt finally stopping them, but not before he picks up 16 yards. Boy, it's so nice, isn't it, to have Dwayne Brown back in the starting lineup. This is a superstar in the league back in a tackle. Had that toe injury, but when he's out in front of plays or he's backside pass protecting, good things tend to happen. And really, the 49ers haven't stopped the running game of the Texans. They just haven't been able to stay with it. From the 50. Foster again, swinging to the outside, taken down from behind by Dan Scuda. You go back to halftime of last week when the Texans were leading Seattle 20 to 3 to tonight. And those are the numbers over the last four quarters. You know, I can remember a playoff game where Brett Farr threw six interceptions, and after the fifth one, I said, oh, he may not even throw another pass, and he's still gunning it out there. You know, as a quarterback, sometimes you got to suck it up and just go take your shot. You cannot run and hide. Second and eight. And Sean guns it over the middle, and that is caught by the rookie. That's DeAndre Hopkins, tackled by Brock, and it's a first down to the 30-yard line. Well, this man coverage has been working the entire night this time. It's Hopkins who's going to win the one-on-one -on -one battle. Good route, stemming him back up. That was needed. If you start working the inside some, maybe some of the outside throws can begin to work and you can take your deep shots over the top. But you have to get something going inside in the middle of the field. I'm surprised these tight ends haven't been a bigger factor so far. to the outside and too high too tall for Andre Johnson who draws double coverage it'll be second down and 10. That's wide open I mean that's just flat wide open as you get I, I, Matt Schaub accuracy has to be his thing he's not particularly mobile I mean that is wide open in the National Football League I don't know if this thing just slipped 
Over striding? I, I don't know. Sailed a couple tonight. Second and ten. Inside draw. Tate. Tate all the way to the 23-yard line. Ahmad Brooks makes the tackle. Third down and three for the Texans now. You know, you almost, with your quarterback going through this, have to be a little bit patient in calling the plays because the running game continues to work. I mean, it has been effective tonight and probably, again, going to be four-down territory here. So if you can run and pick up a yard and a half in each of the next two downs, you've got your first down. Or you can go empty and throw it around. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, you know. Take your pick. Five receivers go out, and that pass is caught, no. but then dropped at the one-yard line because it was underthrown, and Andre Johnson came back, and Terrell Brown was there for the coverage. So Johnson could not hold on fourth down. This one's on Andre Johnson, outside receiver here. Andre goes up with one hand to try and catch it, and there was no reason. He is a tremendous, well, maybe it was a little bit farther out there, but those are the kind of plays that Andre Johnson has made throughout the course of his career and boy, it's been one of those nights all around for the Texans. Well, Randy Bullock, he missed one from 45 earlier. This is a 41-yard attempt. And the Texans get their first point since the second quarter last week. 12-01, remaining in the third, 21-3. All right, coming up this week on the uh, Tonight Show here on NBC, the guests will include Whitney Cummings. There she is, Jack Black and Kyle Gass. The Tonight Show this coming week here on NBC. San Francisco on this first Sunday night in October, 21 to 3, as the Texans finally get on the board. And the 49ers now will take over offensively for the first time. In this half, here's the Michael James. He sees his first action of the night. Running back. High pick out of Oregon. Meanwhile, Colin Kaepernick, he's missing his two top receivers in Mario Manningham and Michael Crabtree, but Bolden came over. And through week four, as you can see, Bolden was the guy. Two touchdowns, no picks when he intended a pass for him. Otherwise, a complete different story and tonight only Bolden among the wideouts have caught in anything Baldwin's been targeted twice Kaepernick has completed only four passes he's thrown 11 Davis has caught two and Bolden has caught two Gore starts at running back and it's taken down behind the line of scrimmage by J.J. Watt another what they call TFL tackle for loss oh my goodness Anthony Davis just having no chance whatsoever He's been doing this all season long. This is why you're the defensive player of the year. Anthony Davis thinks he's got him, but he just can't control him. Big, strong guy that you stick your arms out and try and block him. You have no chance. Second and 12 from the 24. Pick up the blitz. Here goes Gore to the 30. The Niners, when... Training camp, or at least the OTAs, began back in March. I mean, you thought about Michael Crabtree. You thought about Mario Manningham, but he was coming off surgery. They expect that Manningham back, they think, maybe before the month is out. And then at the end of next month, maybe you get Crabtree back from the Achilles. And, of course, they could pick up Bolden. And that turned out to be a godsend for them. You know, Kyle Williams has nine catches on the year as the second leading wide receiver. And after that, you go down to John Baldwin with two. I mean, it's almost not the National Football League. Third and five. And Kaepernick is going to go down as they sack him. Coming in is Whitney Merciless. Take it over as a starter this season. Their number one pick out of Illinois last year. Whitney Merciless, two and a half sacks a week ago and follows it up here and what we've seen out of Merciless this year is that he has sort of come to the whole J.J. Watt Cushing kind of style of relentless play and pass rush and a lot of his sacks now are coming on a second and third effort just like that one right there. Andy Lee this time a booming kick and Martin 
Newton backs up to the 16 yard line. And again that 49 or special teams coverage is brilliant but a flag does come in at the end of the play. Kasim Osgood made the tackle and we'll get the call from Mike Carey after a 60 yard punt and a four yard run back. You know, it's interesting Colin Kaepernick really hasn't even had to make any plays tonight. No. During the return holding receiving team number 34 half the distance to the goal first down I'm out. AJ Boyd that's not what you need after a 60 yard punt. It's the end of Candlestick Park which opens a baseball only stadium as you can see in 1960. They expanded it and surrounded it. The Niners moved here in 1971. One of three stadiums to host 300 NFL games and 3,000 baseball games. Mason McCovey played here. Dwight Clark made that catch. 27 NFL postseason games. All at Candlestick Park. Home sweet home for you for well, a lot of years. Three years of doing the Giants. As Foster takes it up to the 11. All I remember about that basically is Bobby Mercer, the late Bobby Mercer, great guy. Oh, wait a minute. Who's this No, guy? no, this one. Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> All the oh. different hairstyles of well, Mr. Al Michaels. I, I, You're I, a handsome fella. Look at you. I couldn't find a barber in those years. <laughs> Bobby Mercer used to put his bats in the sauna to keep them warm and had the bat boy come out and bring them to him in the on-deck circle. Second and nine. And that pass is incomplete intended for Andre Johnson, what third and nine. Most famous moment here, the catch? In, in football, for sure. Well, there was, was an earthquake in the World Series right. in 89, of course. That was... You were here for that, too. That was a, a famous one. And 49ers, of course, have had such success over a two-decade period. And there's Dwight Clark in the ring of honor. Great wide receiver. They had a phenomenal... Run through the 80s and 90s with Walsh and Seifert. Steve Mariucci, third and nine. And shot goes down back at the five, and Ray McDonald gets the sack. So you have a 60-yard punt. You have a penalty on the run back. You've got a fast three and out. Now they're going to punt, and J.D. needs some attention. Gary Kubiak has the right play call. they got a pick in the middle of the field. It's the easiest play to execute against man coverage there is, and they screw that up. They don't even get any kind of a rub action. They don't get anything to pop anybody clear. Just simple execution is part of the breakdown here tonight. Shane Leckler to punt. Williams backs up. Kyle from the 35. Can't get loose. Tackled at the 40 yard line with eight and a half. To go in the third, an 18 point San Francisco lead. Well, in the NFL, if there's a triple crown for a defensive player, this man is the winner. Last year, led the league in sacks, 20 and a half, led the league in deflected passes, 17, led the league in tackles for loss. And we were talking to him last night, there he is, and I said, of the three, I mean, is there one that you're most proud of? And he said, absolutely tackles for loss. Because that shows that I'm playing very hard on first and second down, as well as third down. Not just pass rushing. Here's Frank Gore. Look at the room, and he gets tripped up by Kareem Jackson. And what about last week? There he was. And... In all of the other sports, if you look like that, you're out of the game until you get cleaned up. But uh, in the NFL, it's it's different. And he stayed in the game. Here's a guy who, as a kid, played hockey. Can you imagine him as like a 13-year-old? He actually played in Europe with a junior team. He looked like he was in the penalty box last week. Yeah, won the uh, big tournament in Germany. He's the leading scorer over there. I thought he scored too. Oh, boy. Here's Gore. Well, as he's been all season long, J.J. Watt, there's a reason why he's the reigning defensive MVP. Those arms extended, the eyes in the backfield, and a big hit that follows. Trying to cut him off on the backside of plays has proven to be nearly impossible for Anthony Davis here tonight. If there's somebody playing better than that guy in the NFL, I don't know who it is. 
third and six. People likening him to the Howie Long and the way Howie used to play. Kaepernick throws and the pass is incomplete. Here comes a flag and Bolden was the intended receiver and Bryce McLean starts to argue right away. And Mike Harry is in a discussion right now. Get the feeling Mike might be trying to talk him yeah. out of it because he had the opposite view of it. You know, he's standing yep. over there. I wonder. Yep. Before the pass, holding defense number 21. Five yard penalty, automatic. First down. Couldn't talk him out of it. That's McCain, and that's an automatic first for the 49ers. And that was third down, and that hurts. Let's take a look. A little arm wrapped around, I guess, but, you know, Anquan Bolden was basically going for rebound position there, and I. Well, tough to play defense anymore. Well, Michael James is in the game now as the running back. Second round draft choice last quarter at Oregon. And a flag is down. There's movement up front before the snap. And James with a nice run around the left side. J.J. Watt kind of jumped. Yeah, he And did. I think he thought that the play was going to be called on the offense and he just stopped and believe me JJ Watt does not stop he saw Outside, something or he thinks he saw something 99 five yard penalty is declined second down they'll take the gain it'll be second and one let's take a look if there's any movement there it is Anthony Davis leaned back JJ Watt saw it unfortunately he didn't have one of those little pink flags if he did he'd have thrown it though Second and one, Gore back in. And Gore gets the first down and a lot more. To the 15-yard line goes Frank Gore, their all-time leading rusher. And for Frank Gore tonight, that's 14 carries for 80 yards. Double jumbo here. You've got Adam Snyder right there and Kilgore right beside him. So seven offensive linemen in the game. And they just overload this smaller, quicker Houston Texans defense that has to be getting pretty frustrated right now. Six and a half left in the quarter. Well, the flag. That was Mike Carey threw his flag and didn't blow the whistle. There's no foul on the play. There's no foul for a false start. First down. All right. <laughs> a lot of stuff and nothing happened. Uh, none of it's been particularly good for the Texans. Jim Harbaugh goes to the specs. It's like Mike Carey gave it the uh, like a center, you know, snapping the ball like fake snapping the thing and Carey threw it and he almost wanted to catch it. You could see him. <laughs> you could see him almost trying to catch it out of midair. Oh, I got to blow the whistle now. Looking for room, and he's going to come back the other way, and Kaepernick is going to throw a block and a good one, but the rest of the defense is there, and Gore gets taken down to the 21-yard line. Kaepernick throwing a block on Brooks Reed. I'm sure that Kaepernick's wanting to get involved in the action here a little bit. Comes back, there's Kaepernick. Pretty good block. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a big man. You, you walk in the room with Colin Kaepernick and you go, yeah, there's a there's an NFL quarterback. 6'4 mm -hmm. and about 230. And chiseled. And that is deflected and incomplete. Jared Crick trying to catch J.J. Watt's record. His second deflection. If I remember correctly, Crick was a pretty good college football player. Had some injury issues and Still trying to work his way back and tough to get playing time on this team, but you know, he was well blocked on that play by Mike Upati. But that's what they're doing now. If you get blocked and you know you're not going to get there, start watching those quarterbacks' eyes and bat it down. Rick last year, second, or make it the fourth round draft choice from Nebraska. A 
They go five wide. Kaepernick slings it over the middle into traffic and incomplete. Vernon Davis running right down the seam, and it's fourth and 15. It's like Danielle Manning. This is really a great throw. Low and inside, and is that Manning? I think it is. 38. Yep. Danielle Manning jumps in there and really just perfect coverage on the play. You can't make a better throw than that. Just perfect coverage. Phil Dawson now. This is a 38 yard attempt for the longtime Cleveland Brown and now 49 er kicker. Their first points in the period 24 to 3. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king. By Farmers, get smarter at Farmers.com. By Nissan Innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation that excites. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Well, at halftime, 75 breast cancer survivors were honored by the 49ers. Each survivor was presented with a pink rose. Joe Staley's mom as well, Jan, a breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. Very happy that she didn't have to go through the whole thing. A lump back to me for her and doing fine. So congratulations to Jan. Phil Dawson. Something skyward taken by Martin at the one yard line. And Martin taken down by Craig Dole. So where do we go next Sunday? We go down to Harlem, Texas, the Washington Redskins come off a bye week and they won their first game of the year in Oakland last week. Football night starts at 7 o'clock. <laughs> Tony Romo and the Cowboys an unbelievable day. Tony for 506 yards, five touchdowns, a 140 rating against Peyton Manning. At the end, it was Denver staying undefeated at 5-0 and, and the Dallas Cowboys go to 2-3. and three. Washington and Dallas and that pass is incomplete. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the end of the Giants are 0 and 5. Let's see if Washington can get on a roll. I mean, Dallas, you know, there are there are losses and then there are losses, and that's one that just has to stick with you today. Well, even a team like the New York Giants, you go, okay, they're 0 and 5, their season's over. First place is 2 and 3 in that division. So everything is still possible in the NFC East. As it used to be in the NFC West, and we had that Seattle St. Louis game a couple of years ago. With the winner going to the playoffs with a so 500 mark, Ben Tate stopped at the line of scrimmage. Here's Michelle. Well, guys, starting defensive tackle Ray McDonald out for the 49ers, so they're down to four defensive linemen now. Tony Jarrett Eddy is in there for them, and McDonald left with a biceps injury done for the night, so Glenn Dorsey and Justin Smith were on the sideline coaching up Tony Jarrett Eddy, and he is in there for him. All right, thank you, Michelle. And of course, you know Alden Smith's missing. You know that Patrick Willis is missing the, the linebacker spot. So the 49ers deep depth right now. Paying off his third and nine, and the pass is caught. And seeking that first down and getting it is Garrett Graham as he crosses the uh, the 30 yard line. Well, they're trying to create a little pass rush inside by standing up some of the defensive tackles and letting them go to work. But just unable to get the pressure and it's amazing that without Alden Smith and they still haven't brought extra pressure they have basically just played their seven guys in there just like Alden Smith they've just rushed four for the most part and still just three points here goes Tate well Houston just loves to run to the outside they're known for that they run wide on about 61 percent of the plays they have over the last three years and there's Foster who's stretching out along the sideline, and that's the hallmark of, of that zone blocking scheme, stretch offense, stretch runs for Kubiak. Yeah, and really the key, I think, is the play of Ahmad Brooks on the edge of that defense. Trying to take it away, second down and four. And almost intercepted. That was a freebie for Eric Reed. Right here, and he's going to break on the ball. And in my mind, this is a weakness of Matt Schaub. When Matt Schaub's on a rollout, 
or a plan play, a bootleg, one of those kinds of things. His numbers are through the roof. When he's flushed out of the pocket and just scrambling, not so good. Foster back in. Third and four. Boy, do they ever need a conversion here to try to stay alive. And now you got a whistle before, before this one. Focus number 75. Five yard penalty is still third down. Right tackle, it's Derek Newton. Chris talking about shot outside the pocket on bootlegs, very good. Without a bootleg, not very good. Now you're into that time of game where you just have to sort of forget the play action fake. They're not going to buy that. They're going to be all over your receivers. And somebody better block Corey Lemon Yeh, number 96, at the bottom of the screen. He's the guy that now has the athleticism to make a play in this kind of situation, win one on one. Third and nine. Sean's going to find the open man. Can he get the first down? But he can't. That's Owen Daniels. And now at the 39, you got a fourth and one. So what do you want to do now? You're down by 21. The special teams group starting to come in. But Kubiak knows. Down by three touchdowns. We know there are 18 minutes left in the game. But there are times when you just got to go for it. You play to win the game. You play to win the game. Thank you, Hearn. <laughs> Fourth and one. And a timeout. So a timeout taken here. Fourth and one with 2.54 remaining in the quarter. You know how the worst thing in the world for a professional athlete, any athlete really, I never feared losing. I never feared getting hurt. What you fear a little bit is getting embarrassed. And for Matt Schaub right now, this is an embarrassing run. I mean, to go four straight games with an interception for a touchdown, it just doesn't happen. It hasn't happened to him in his career. And so now you have to sort of muster up the courage to go on with it and make some of those tight throws. He's done that so far in this game, but it is an extremely uncomfortable position for any athlete to be in. And you can't get away from it. You go back home and it's all over radio and television it's all over the newspaper so it's not as if you can escape it no fourth and one after the timeout now Foster is in Jones is the fullback Sean guns it over the middle complete so they're able to convert on a fourth down to the 41-yard line, and Owen Daniels, the Pro Bowl tight end, tackled by Will Hoyd, and they stay alive. Well, I tell you, that time Schaub sailed it right over the head of one of the middle linebackers who I just don't even think saw the football. <laughs> Bowman, immediately after the play, puts his hands on his head like, oh, my goodness, I didn't see it. He could have had the interception. He heard it. Yeah. He went whizzing by as Schaub over in the middle again this time it's Foster and he gets taken down by the sure-handed Bowman after a gain of seven it's second down and three well, here's Bowman right here he's on Arian Foster so he's kind of looking for him there just out of the zone comes up and makes the play but it looks like and feels like Houston's got a little something working and Foster turns the corner, picks up the first down, stays in bounds. Will Hoy finally stops him, but he moves the ball inside the 25-yard line. This game's a long way from over. It, Houston's offense, a top five offense in the National Football League to go along with the number one ranked defense. You put a touchdown on the board here, and there's a lot of time left here. We've seen a lot stranger things than this happen. From the 24. Protection good, but the coverage is good as well, unless the pass is thrown away. Second down, 10. Now we've seen this before out of Houston when they 
They're so effective when they're able to run the ball and go play action off of it, but they're not really a come-from-behind kind of team, you know, when they just have to start dropping back and throwing the ball. But I still don't think they're to that point. I, the best thing they have going still is Arian Foster running the football, but when you throw it on first down and you're incomplete, now you start putting yourself in tougher positions. Second and ten, the ball at the 25. And this is Foster, and that is Dan Scuda, one of the guys taking Alton Smith's spot and who stops him behind the line of scrimmage. Beautiful play, third and 13. Dan Scuda right here just sort of snuck up here at the last minute to bring the fifth guy. They don't bring that a lot, and so maybe they just sort of booked that he wouldn't come. Scuda, the first and second down guy, more of the run player. And Lemonier comes in on passing downs, but you saw why with Dan Scooter. Houston down by 21. They were down by 21 on opening night. The Monday night opener in San Diego and won the game. They were trailing 28-7 in that. Blitz coming. Passes. Intercepted at the 25 by Tony Gerard Eddy. Tony Jarrett Eddy with the interception. So Michelle talking about the fact he had to come into the game because McDonald was out, and what do you know? A pick. 49ers all-time great Jerry Rice from the gridiron of the fairway. Golf's ultimate reality competition, big break NFL from Puerto Rico, premiering Tuesday night on the Golf Channel. Look at the Bay Bridge, Kubiak, Rashad, Tony Jarrett, Eddy. Practice squatter last year, played his college ball at Texas A&M. Zone blitz, he's in coverage, and 63 picks up the third interception tonight for the 49ers. Last few seconds of the third quarter, Gore's going to swing to the outside and take the ball up to the 33, and that should take us to the end of the third. Amazingly, Kaepernick tonight is 4 of 13. His shot can only towel off. Collin has not completed a pass in his last seven. No completions in the last two quarters, and yet his team is up. Thanks a lot to the defense by 21. End of three. 24 3, and Sunday night football from San Francisco resumes after this. Fourth quarter begins in San Francisco. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya, and a second and nine for the 49ers at their own 32-yard line. Kaepernick out of the pistol this time. Play fake. And Bruce Miller with the catch. Let's go back to the interception by Jared Eddy. Well, how in the world do you throw an interception to a defensive tackle? Here's how it's going to go. They're going to do the old Pittsburgh Steelers fire zone and then drop Jared Eddy back underneath. Schaub never sees him. Throws it right to him. Sometimes when it's going bad, some of the reads that he's made thousands of times just jump up and bite you. Third and five. And Kaepernick throws his first completion since the first quarter to Davis who stays inbound and goes all the way. Sixty-four yards for the touchdown. Well, they've been running the ball so effectively. Finally starts to impact the safeties. This time, Daniel Manning believing it run all the way. And there was just no way in the world that even Ed Reed was going to catch up to Vernon Davis. Hamstring or not. And that time, Colin Kaepernick put it right on the money. So now two weeks in a row, Vernon Davis with a big play. And I tell you, Greg Roman has called a great game tonight for the San Francisco 49ers. Frank Gore, nice block on the blitzing Swearinger. And there he is, Greg Roman, who can only smile as he looks at the replay. Kaepernick for 64 yards in the touchdown. Confirmed upstairs, Dawson for the extra point, and it's 31 to 3, 49ers.
Sunday Night Football being brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Audi, truth in engineering. And by McDonald's, loving it. Well, Palo Alto High, they beat Fremont the other night, Friday night, 41-14. Jim Harbaugh graduated from Palo Alto High School back in 1982. That Jack coaching out here. Quite the uh, coaching tree now, huh? I'll say. All under one roof. Yeah. This is six yards deep in the end zone where it's taken out by Sierra Wood. <laughs> Harbaugh with Davis. You know, Jim Harbaugh is one of those guys, it would be fun to play for. He is, he's like one of the guys. You watch him in practice. And half the time he's rushing the quarterback, half the time he's snapping the ball, he's running around the huddle. You can tell it just about kills him that he doesn't get to play quarterback anymore, but it's the next best thing coaching this team. Well, now you've got Yates in the game, so they do have to make the quarterback switch at 31-3. to And it's T.J. Yates, third year, North Carolina, picked in the fifth round in 2011. Team went to the playoffs for the first time ever. Schaub got hurt. At the end of the regular season, and Yates came in and led them to a playoff win against Cincinnati. So Matt has the helmet on and all of that, but uh, at this point, Kubiak has seen enough for tonight. Second and eight. And this is Tate again, busting his way through the middle, and then the ball is stripped out before the end of the play and the 49ers as it bounces around come up with the football Terrell Brown winds up with it the play is still alive and he's out of bounds Dante Whitner with the tackle a flag came in late after the run back but it was Whitner who came in and never gave up and Tate loves to fight for yardage and that's how before he goes down the ball comes loose after the ball was dead, personal foul, offense number 76, late hit, half the distance to the goal, San Francisco ball, first down. And that's the uh, left tackle, Dwayne Brown. It's a great play on a couple of fronts there. The rookie, Eric Reed, refused to let Tate go to the ground, kind of holds him up almost to give Whitner, Hitner, whatever you want to call him, a chance to rip that thing out of there. You know, what else could go wrong or right, depending on your point of view? <laughs> well, 49ers are now even on the season. On the give-take chart, minus four coming in and four tonight. Four takeaways. And Tate needs some attention on the bench. A lot of people need attention on that bench. Oh, boy. The only thing that's gone right tonight is J.J. Watt hasn't broken open his nose again. He, he put the over-under on, what, three plays, three and a half plays? Three and a half plays. He's going to bust open again. So first and goal from the eight-yard line. And Gore. And look at him, though. And he just takes... A bunch of guys with him all the way down to the three-yard line. Well, they say once you hit 30, you're not, you can't play running back anymore. And I don't know if anybody ever told Frank Gore that. He just seems to be getting better. He's one of those guys. I bet you I've talked to three, four, five different defensive players that say, I hate playing that guy. He's so strong, one of the best blocking running backs there is in the game today. And when he gets that low, you can't get underneath him to drive him the other way. He's out. Anthony Dixon comes in. He seeks his second touchdown of the night. But has to settle for a yard gain. It'll be third down and goal. Well, you saw Tom Rathman over there, longtime 49er, and you watch him coach these guys. They are 
tough on the running backs. They are constantly trying to rip the ball out of their coaching details. They have four of them on this team, and all of them can play. They're all tough, just like Tom was. Mm -hmm. Third and goal. Looks him again, and he's going to try to plug his way through. And Brian Cushing is there to stop him, so it's fourth down and goal. Nice play by Brian Cushing coming all the way across the formation to make that one. And this is a prideful defense right here is going to zip in behind this one to cut off Dixon and actually run behind some of those pulling linemen we've seen all night. And Jim Harbaugh is going to just settle for three. Yeah, to the uh, consternation of uh, a few folks, whose lucky number is 43. I have to clear my throat here. Here's Dawson now for a 19 yard field goal attempt, and uh, Carey is going to throw the flag for Dwayne. Five yard penalty is still fourth down. You rascal. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson once said, it's good to have a little rascal in you. Jimmy Johnson has a lot of rascal <laughs> in does. him. So this then becomes a 24-yard field goal attempt. David Akers was here last year, injured and had a bad year. And they went into the market, Trent Balky did, and came up with Dawson. And kicking as well as ever. The five more denotes it's 34 to 3. Sort of. NHL season off and running on NBC Sports Network. Blackhawks Blues rivalry Wednesday night at 7 Eastern Time. And it's a shot of the Bay Bridge. Good light show going on on the Bay Bridge at night here in San Francisco. 49ers putting on a pretty good light show themselves tonight. It's dropped in the end zone and then Wood wants to come out. <laughs> the guy said, no, no. 34 3. So the Texans go home. They have. The Rams next week in Houston. Then they go to Kansas City. Chiefs at the moment 5 0. Then a bye week. Then we have them on a Sunday night against the 4 and 1 Indianapolis Colts. Yates in a quarterback. The ball is at the 20 yard line, and Yates will set up the screen to Foster. And he'll pick up six. So Gary Kubiak is going to have a decision to make this week. He may have already made it. Gary knows about backup quarterbacks. He spent his whole career backing up John Elway. What do you think he does next week? My opinion is not going to be very popular in Houston, but I think he's going to stay with Matt Schaub. Uh, if you compare these two quarterbacks, T.J. Yates, do I think he's a good backup? I do. Do I think you're going to win a Super Bowl with him? Probably not. Uh, now, the way Matt Schaub is playing, you're not going to win anything either, but at least he's a guy with a track record of being able to play at a high level in this league. DeMarcus Dobbs, the man who's down. We're back at his second down and five for the Houston Texans at the 25 yard line. And this is Foster close to the first down. We left you with uh, DeMarcus Dobbs going down, but he got right up and came off. But uh, they're getting a little thinner, the 49ers, along that defensive front. Yeah, they sure are, but it's not going to matter in this one. And as long as you have that guy right there, and eventually you've got to think Alden Smith's going to be a factor. The schedule gets much softer for the 49ers than what it was the first five weeks, and they're in pretty good shape at this point. Third and one blitz coming, and it's exploited as Foster runs through a big hole and picks up the first down. Well, it's just one of those things that you haven't even seen the best of this bunch yet. Patrick Willis is going to come back here eventually as well. Watch Bowman here is going to 
Once again, Myers, the center, gets up on him. But this is a good running football team. And, and when they're running the ball, they're good. That's when their passing game is good, not the other way around. And Yates. Buying time and then just swings into the bench. It'll be second down. 49er schedule. Well, they had a rough beginning. I mean, a tough one anyway. They did beat Green Bay, but lost to Seattle and Indianapolis. But now you've got Arizona coming here next week. They go to Tennessee. They meet Jacksonville in London. You can meet Jacksonville anywhere these days. They have a bye week, and then Carolina. There's the Seattle game. They go to New Orleans on November 17th. So some tough ones, but not for a while. Mm -hmm. and this team gets healthy with those wide receivers and Patrick Willis. They're going to be tough to handle. Second down. Pass is caught at the 50-yard line. To your Posey. Tackled by Eric Reed. Well, the 49ers, I mean, through the years, so many great defensive backs. One of them, Jim Johnson, the other Jim Johnson's in the Hall of Fame, going all the way back. But the Ronnie Lott, of course, and now you got... Mr. Reed off to a pretty good start in his career. A tremendous start, and he was well trained. His mother played football. Right. Tackle football, which is remarkable when you stop and think about it. So he went out to a couple of games, and he's thinking, oh, this is going to be cute, watching the moms playing football. <laughs> They're knocking each other around out there, full pads. 35, and the pass is caught over the middle, and it's hauled in by Owen Daniels. For a first down, and there is uh, Sharon Guillory Reed playing for the Baton Rouge Wildcats. Can you imagine watching your mom play football? <laughs> I mean, that would just be fantastic. I have to call my mom tonight. <laughs> to pad up a little bit. Yeah. Never too late. Never too late to sign up for women's football, right? Mr. <laughs> <laughs> for promo. From the 44. Foster's going to try to get back the other way to the 41 and we check in with Michelle. Well you were talking about Eric Reed and one of the things Dante Whitner thinks makes Reed special is how smart he is. Whitner told me you only have to tell him things one time. He doesn't make the same mistake over and over and Whitner also told me Reed takes great notes in the classroom. He said a lot of the veteran guys can't take notes as well as he does and that comes from high school and having a 4-3-4-4 GPA whatever he had he said he was raised really well he was and Jim Harbaugh trying to recruit him to Stanford but he stayed at home at LSU and the second time around Harbaugh told him you don't have a choice this time right. I got you that's it man I drafted you you're coming Foster taken down by Carlos Rogers you know, it was interting Carlos Rogers didn't want any part of that but it is interesting that Eric Reed, a rookie, when we were talking with Dante Whitner Hitner, that here's a guy, he said it's actually easier to play with Reed than it was the Pro Bowler Deshaun Goldson because he communicates so well out there. They're talking back and forth all the time, communicating, and you know, Goldson was more the guy just wanted to come down and take somebody's head off. Third and six from the 40. Flag is down. 49ers with a rare blitz. Brock covering on the play. The man who said two picks tonight. And Mike Carey will fill us in. Offside. Defense number 55. Five yard penalty. It's still third down. Still third. That, that uh, makes it third and one. Ahmad Brooks, the accordion. According to Jim Harbaugh, you know, we talk about their stretch plays and the key to it is the end guy on the line of scrimmage, in this case, Ahmad Brooks, has to hold his ground and still be able to catch the back if he bounces around to the outside. Well, he's fantastic at it, but he smashes it down so hard on the edge. That's his nickname, the accordion. Maybe. Kind of sort of. I said it. <laughs> Third and one. Play action. And Yates, well, everybody's covered, so he just has to swing it away. Had time. But that secondary is tough. Fourth down. Well, we've seen it across the board tonight, whether it's zone as it was in this case or 
man coverage as it's been for much of the night. It has just been blanket coverage. This secondary, I think, is going to get better as well. Eric Reed, a huge jump already in his coverage ability. Tremaine Brock on the outside. Namdi Asamoa is not even available for this game, and he was their third cornerback. So now you think, we add him to Tremaine Brock, and where are you going to go? Fourth and one. He drops it. He gets sacked. Ball is out, but after the play is dead. And the 49ers stop him on downs. Will Hoyt coming in there. Six minutes to go. The Niners on their way to three and two. If you download NFL Mobile, you'll never be without football. Get live access to exclusive premium content on your smartphone. Star Star NFL. The Bay Bridge from San Francisco to the East Bay where there's more football tonight later on. Colt McCoy comes in to play quarterback. So Kaepernick is done for the night. His stats won't dazzle you, but his team is up by 31 points. Swinging to the outside goes Kendall Hunter around the corner. The pick of the first down. Bruce Miller leading the way in tonight's aerial coverage. I have a Candlestick Park brought to you by Geico. Yep, they're going to demolish this joint next uh, February or March. 49ers moving about 30 miles down the road to the spot right next to their practice facility in Santa Clara. Mm, it's a beautiful thing. We were there the other day watching practice. And tremendous stadium. I bet you it's loaded with technology in ways that you never thought possible in the stadium. Can't wait to see it. They'll play Super Bowl 50 there in a couple of years. 48 coming up this year. And Michael James picks up eight yards. As we will kick down under five minutes to go. Outstanding performance tonight by this offensive line. There's big Joe Staley who just a week ago was carted off, taken into the x-ray room and a lot of people thought his season might be over because he was in a great deal of pain and in a rare moment of showing that pain, let out some screams that uh, has led to a little abuse around here this week. Well, it turned out to be fine. <laughs> he took a ton of grief as Anthony Dixon is the back. And he'll take the toss and pick up the first down around the outside. Staley leading the way. In case you missed it, in the Thursday night game against St. Louis, here's what happened. Well, he came off the field. By the time he got to the locker room and it was okay, you can imagine what the guys were doing with him. <laughs> the greatest story of that, though, is Alex Boone, his line mate, saw him coming out of the x-ray room. Now, he doesn't know if he has a broken leg or what, and he starts going, ah, my foot, ah. <laughs> He goes, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, well, Michael James for a game of a couple. He even had some fun with himself on his Twitter account. Oh, my goodness. It's just one of those things in a locker room that will live on forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter when you need a little break in the action. Now, Joe Staley, make no doubt about it. This guy is hes the best they've got on this offensive line. Tremendous Pro Bowl player. Went through a streak at the end of last year. Played as well as any tackle in football. His whole run through the playoffs was pitching shutouts against everybody out there playing with a big... Big bubble on his ankle tonight, but uh, that won't be what they remember after he just played that. And the Michael James takes the ball to the 15-yard line behind a Miller block. So because of the route tonight, James seeing extensive action here. Gore carried 17 times for 81 yards, and James now four totes for 31. Right, let's give him a little love over here. Joe Staley, watch this block. This is what he does all the time, and that's the reason he keeps going to Hawaii and Pro Bowl and All Pro and all those kinds of things. He's that kind of a player. Pretty funny guy, wasn't he? Good oh, sense yeah. of humor. He's the the uh, seatmate for Colin Kaepernick when they go on road games and 
and says he just tries to keep Gollum loose. And Anthony Dixon is going to take us to the to the two minute warning. A pair of minutos remaining. The candlestick clock all 49ers. 34th minute. Wendy's post game report Michelle down on the field with the stars of the game Bob Tony and Mike Florio will wrap up the game and the day in the NFL Chris and I look ahead to next week when it's RG3 it's Tony Romo it's Washington and Dallas it comes up right after the game the football the full night begins uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern Kansas City 5 and 0 oh. they beat Tennessee today Andy Reid doing a Fantastic job. Tom Brady has his streak snapped at 52 in a rainstorm in Cincinnati. And the Bengals beat New England and the Broncos. 46 points a game. And they needed to, a little bit more than that today to take care of the Dallas Cowboys in a crazy one. Almost 1,000 yards of passing. Yeah, yeah. 99 points. And a little victory formation. On second and eight here. They can run it down almost all the way and there's Brian Cushing and J.J. Watt and back they go to home and uh, Schaub so, you know, a prideful man of course you still have that helmet on and the whole you know with Gates in there in the second half and Arian Foster I mean there's a lot of talent but uh, don't tell your fandom that right now. Well, we saw him blown out once by the Green Bay Packers, came back and won a playoff game later that season. They're one of those teams, if they don't get it going with the running game and the play action, sometimes they can look really bad. Maybe the best of the news is that T.J. Yates didn't come in there and put up a couple of touchdowns. I, I really, I'm going to be surprised if Matt Schaub's not the quarterback. I may be dead wrong. I have absolutely no idea. But... It's still a young season. Do you make that bold of a move already, no matter what's happened to Matt Schaub at this point? There are going to be people that very strongly argue you do and have a case. Well, I mean, Kubiak's going to know better than anybody if Yates has what he feels it's going to take to get it turned around at this point. And, and part of it's going to be the reaction of his teammates. You know, they, they stuck behind them last week. They had some closed-door meetings on Monday. Okay, we're behind him. We're supportive. He comes out his first pass tonight, another pick six. At some point, that support begins to erode. Well, the 49ers will turn it over on downs, and then Houston will come out and finish up the game on offense. And Gary, concluding his eighth season in Houston, he actually started his coaching career here. He was the 49ers quarterback's coach in 1994 and that's the year Steve Young led him to the Super Bowl through six touchdown passes in that game Gary came with Mike Shanahan who was the offensive coordinator that year and then Mike got the job in Denver as the head coach and took Gary with him for a lot of years but this one was really won by Vic Fangio and the defensive side of the ball you know tremendous when you consider that no Patrick Willis, no Alden Smith to hold this team to three points. Greg Roman, the running game that he orchestrated has just been fantastic the last couple of weeks. This is a team very much headed in the right direction right now. Well, Sierra Wood will end the game with a run right there. And for Jim Harbaugh, who watched his team get routed by Seattle, lose here in Indianapolis, they rebound in St. Louis. They won a blowout game tonight. He goes to three and two as Michelle started the game by saying, if you're three and two, you got about a 50-50 chance to get to postseason. Otherwise, you have about a 20% chance of two and three. Coming up next, it's the Wendy's post game report on the other side of the park.